Welcome to the show, everybody. Super excited to have with me today Susan Zhao. She is the co-founder and COO over at QLink. Susan, welcome. Thank you so much. Um, my pleasure to be here. Now, for anybody who hasn't heard about QLink, can you tell us the short version? What are you doing? Okay, so one sentence or decentralized mobile network. Um, so what is mobile network? So everyone pretty much is a subscriber for the telecom, right? And then everyone has a lot of telecom resources like your Wi-Fi, your mobile data, your SMS, even your home router, any infrastructure running on the, this network or supporting this network. And we try to decentralize the service of the mobile internet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so what's, I guess, what's the problem with the existing system? Why do we need a, a blockchain-based project for this? Oh, that's a very good question. So uh, if you take one step back and looking at this, uh, this great web that's supporting our life every single day, it's operating in extreme centralized way. We only have a handful of uh, telecom operators uh, and there's a lot of problems with the, uh, of the centralized operation. Mm -hmm. The first is unbalanced resource. And we have spent a lot of money. So in past 10 years, about 450 billion was spent to building telecom infrastructure. We have about global, globally um, 300 million Wi-Fi hotspots. Wow. But when you, when you travel, you still have trouble to access those Wi-Fi hotspots because no one wants to share. And you will have always no one to ask uh, the password. Mm -hmm. And people worry about safety, privacy, uh, and the Wi-Fi just won't them. If you look at um, um, other things like uh, on the family levels, and one each family will have, so let's just say four people, at least three computers, two smartphones, and uh, one router, which means they have 9.9 .9 gigabyte hertz of computer power, 500, uh, 500 uh, gigabyte of storage, and 2 to 10 megabyte of um, fiber. So what this means, the 50% of the 50 percent of the time they are wasted. You are not at home and then no one is at, no one is using those resources. So why don't we get it shared? Why don't we try to balance those resources globally? And this is the, the origin, origination of our thoughts. And on the other hand, there's a lot of issues related to internet trust. So, for example, um, if you look at a review website like Yelp, uh, even Airbnb, do you really trust the people that actually be there and they left the review for your reference? Mm -hmm. And the people really want the merchant just pay the thoughts to put the comments there. But how can we make sure people are actually using there? So we, we think we have the solution to solve this problem. And decentralized is the best way to address those issues. Very interesting. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. sure a lot of people out there have experienced that problem. I mean, I know I certainly have plenty of times where I get to an airport and my phone's data is not supported or I'm overseas roaming and data costs, you know, a dollar a megabyte or something like this. And you have no way to access the internet. And you're at the airport. You, you haven't printed your ticket because you didn't think you'd need it. And now they're asking, yeah. well, where's your proof of ticket? It's on my phone. Yes. Well, just use the internet. Yes. Well, I don't have it. Well, yes. it and so yes. it's a problem. It's definitely a problem. I think that's a lot yes. of people have experienced. Yes. Now, what is the relationship? How will you be using uh, NEO? Okay. NEO is our asset chain. So um, when you, before you share anything that you have or before anyone want to uh, set up the rules for sharing, you have to assign the identity for that's whatever, a physical mm -hmm. um, hardware or maybe just a, a kind of service. It could be a uh, home router and then we can register the MAC address and SSID ID or even location um, to to the on the new chain, and or it could be uh, your SMS. So say let's say you have five hundred every month, but you never some send one. You never really send one right now, mm -hmm. and you can sell four hundred. And then we register those assets on the new chain. So that's a 
that's a kind of like interaction between uh, what Qlink does and what a Qlink app does with the blockchain. And now, on top of Qlink, is it possible to build other applications? Oh yeah, that's a that's a great question. So. Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, on the top of Neo, and we will build a Qlink chain, which is the chain that dedicated for the network service. So that will solve a lot of issues like uh, expensive gas, because mm -hmm. uh, gas is going to be very expensive if you deploy complex uh, smart contract. And then uh, the, fa um, the other, another issues uh, would be like transaction record transactions, um, because we will support a, a large volume transaction at a very flat fee, and the consensus will be different as well because it's we it always be like POW POS, but now it's it's more like a approvable approvable workload, mm -hmm. and you need to calculate how much exchange that router actually switch uh, switched for the different users. So that needs a new consensus. So those are the direction we're trying to go. And once we have a framework of the queuing chain and we can support any uh, any dApps that related to the telecom service, no matter your traditional telecom operator you want to use blockchain solutions or you're just new and you want to develop some kind of uh, dApps for your own countries. So for example, the payment gap, payment dApp that people don't have to go to in some countries, they really have to go, really have to change U.S. dollars into the local currency and go to the post office to mm -hmm. to pay for the uh, to pay for the phone bill. And so we have the payment app. They can just like a universal payment system, and people can just support those uh, network service pay to be paid on the debt. And you can even have decentralized uh, Yelp, and uh, we can open the Wi-Fi SDK to you which means people who are writing those reviews have to plug into the merchant's Wi-Fi, which most merchants support, to write a review. So that gives a big advantage that people have to be there to upload a review. Mm -hmm. And we uh, solve the issues of the trust here, and you can you can't just hire people who can just put a review there, and you have to be there. And uh, you have to you have to actually raise up the cost to be to uh, to to those fake reviews. So that could be that's a reason. That's a that's one thing that we can I mean uh, increase or solve this kind of like trust issues on this, those situations. That's a pretty interesting use case, actually. Yeah. I think of a uh, of a decentralized uh, internet um, framework now. I want to talk about some of the other use cases that you're looking at. So decentralized global Wi-Fi, essentially. Now, great idea. Now, is this going to be done via a mesh network, or is this all just going to be peer-to-peer -peer Wi-Fi? Oh, okay. So um, differences between uh, mesh network and uh, our solution is uh, the mesh, mesh network, you do have to uh, build a new infrastructure again. So you have a P2P connection between different match box. Um, and uh, before you have uh, abundance, uh, the match box out there, that's actually cost a lot of money. And uh, your network is, uh, uh, I, I think it's, it's gonna be, take some time. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, our solution is, let's just look into exist the resources we have because we have those towers, we have those fibers already, we spend a lot of money, let's just don't ban them. Uh, we, we provide service solutions on the blockchain to increase the efficiency. And then uh, Qlink will do its own base station as well. Um, at some areas, that's, uh, the coverage isn't that good and we can provide this uh, complementary uh, solutions for uh, maybe natural networks or maybe uh, turns LTE into the Wi-Fi or, or even supporting the satellite signals to enhance the coverage of that areas. So you and, and eventually, I mean, I think uh, the, the version will be the same, but uh, uh, just different solutions. All right, interesting. And I suppose the question too, why should I share my internet at all? How much am I actually going to make? Am I going to be making like a, a dollar a month by sharing my internet? Or is this actually something that's going to be 
potentially you can make some money off of doing this, or at least enough money for it to be worth your time to sign up to the service and all these different things. So um, I think most of public Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi as a complimentary service will be free. Uh, but for the people, um, we're talking about more than just Wi-Fi here. We're talking about much broader network solutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, so on the top of the Wi-Fi, we are we're developing a decentralized VPN. So VPN is very strong demand in, <laughs> I would say Asia, but Asia has a lot of demands on the VPN. Mm -hmm. um, okay, for the record, we don't talk it uh, on the Chinese market. Uh, and about, uh, I think other countries, there's still a lot of demands. Um, so decentralized VPN and uh, even the decentralized the game booster. So people, because people are out there and uh, they have they want to they want to share but what we did is we just uh, make the tool and build a small contract for them to share um, and they, if you download our wi-fi sharing app there's a section you can actually set up the price how much qlc you want to charge per connection or per hour mm -hmm. uh, so people actually has to pay for the service uh, what what i picture about wi-fi is it's going to be like a uh, huge gateways to cover um, a lot of people, but not necessarily make a lot of money. Uh, but uh, the uh, the premium service like VPN, the Game Booster, or gonna be premiums on on the top of that. So, and uh, I think people will eventually, uh, I mean, have a choice to choose the basic services or choose uh, the service that they want. And op operators, I mean, oh, VPN is a big industry already and they, uh, there's a lot of money to make. So I wouldn't worry about uh, how to make money in this industry. Interesting. Yeah. Now, I saw as well that you're going to be setting up decentralized SMS sales so that if I'm a, a company, for example, and I've got extra text messages to sell, I can actually sell those to somebody else. So is there currently, I guess, a big market for that? I mean, is this a pain point for companies? I mean, I, I feel like a lot of cell phone companies these days offer unlimited SMS. So at least, at least in New Zealand, quite a few of them do. Maybe, maybe it's different in different countries, of course. But can you uh, explain a bit about that? Yes. Uh, so SMS market is huge for enterprise. So insurance companies that promotion out retailers and send kind of like membership or carry messages, especially at your birthday. Uh, and the internet companies, when you register Uber or Google, some services, mm -hmm. they send authorization messages as well. So uh, SMS were purely a product for enterprise. Uh, it won't be open to individual. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just a, the matching system. And once you register the SMS, and the, the node gonna broadcast the, the registry information to the potential buyers, and the buyers uh, get information back, and the matches and the, ma the matches the, the the supply. So, and once supply and the demand is matched, and the, the you they can send a message out instantly. So, uh, this is more like solution for business, and then we're trying to uh, we're trying to expand. Uh, to a lot of the cloud communication companies mm -hmm. already have uh, SMS um, business. So tr traditionally, they have to buy from an operator. And now they can just buy from the market because uh, I think it's definitely going to be cheaper. And they have a, and uh, anyone who, any enterprises don't have to uh, adapt into the complex the telecom onboarding process. You have to meet the sales and negotiate the terms, sign the contract, and in the, uh, install the software and then com constantly communicate with them. So on the Q link, it's will be simple. You, you just uh, you just download software and set up the message you want to send, and set up the the price how much you want to buy, and uh, it it was an instant uh, instant way. So uh, this is uh, the, the market that we'll focus on and then the product that we'll focus on. Very interesting. I think enterprises, uh, if you can save the money, they will be interested. I think that's yeah. always the case with business. Yeah, exactly. Now, you're also going to be doing Q-Link stations. So <laughs> is, this, is this a special hardware that I need to buy? Can you tell us a bit about this? 
Um, I, I think the I think it will be just like a home router, but uh, it can, as I mentioned, when you are not at home or you are not you know, access to the internet through the router, it can do other things like supporting um, supporting mining of other coins. Um, it, it's actually it's actually very interesting idea in terms of uh, you can put it anywhere. So, for example, in the car. We can customize the version for the car. So your car, as as your car goes, and it will be turned the car into the Wi-Fi hotspots, and you have the mm. coverage around the car, especially when the car stops. And it will solve a lot of problems like uh, um, the the tight effects of uh, the communication. When people get into the town, uh, there is not a need for the communication resources. Mm -hmm. And people get out, and uh, and uh, all the all the fixed infrastructure or wasted. So some mobile solutions uh, compensate for the demands like this. Uh, this is one thing. And um, and uh, there's a, a potential partnership that we're talking to. Um, they need mining the coins. And uh, the one thing they want to do is want to do the home router. Because if they don't do the home router, the they not can be switched off at any time, mm. right? So they have to they have they have to support some daily daily needs. Uh, Wi-Fi is a necessity of our life right now. So if you just put there something there and uh, continuously provides the network service, and at the same time, it provides it act as a, a node or mining power contributing mining power for some kind of some kind some other coins. That's and quite interesting. Potential, yeah, potential partnerships that uh, we're talking to. That's an interesting use case, I think, as well. Yeah. Now, let's say <clears throat> I will be able to use Fiat to access the service. So I'm, if I'm sitting in the airport and I see there's a Q-Link Wi-Fi hotspot, I can actually pay for that in Fiat, theoretically, but then it would get calculated in Q QRC and done that way? So... Uh, we are experimenting uh, how to support the fiat, uh, and uh, I can't talk too much right now because it's uh, still at a very elementary stage. Mm -hmm. And already, we already look out of solutions, and uh, we're just trying to implement into our wallet. And uh, our wallet is already on our app. Um, I mean, so it only supports Neo at this moment. Uh, but the, uh, but I think uh, ultimately we want this uh, this uh, wallet to, to support uh, different currencies like NEP5, ERC20, mm -hmm. and you, you can you can you can buy the QRC. You can only buy QRC uh, by fiat. So and in the future it may support the digital identity of yourself, your digital asset identity. And all your telecom resources, you registered, all the transactions that you made, all the all the connection that you made will be stored into into this wallet. Well. Very interesting. Okay, let's move on to the next idea here. So I, I've seen that there's a recent partnership that's been agreed with Block Array. Yeah. Can you tell me what that partnership's about? So that partnership is a uh, is uh, the base station uh, on the Block Array car. The block arrays are operating a decentralized logic a logistic uh, system in the U.S. So they will have a lot of trucks, and the retailers order the service of the trucks to deliver the goods. Um, so uh, one of the problems that block array uh, having is they have to uh, make all the data of the trucks available. So they need to know where the where the drivers are, what the statics of the trucks, mm -hmm. and um, so essentially, it's more like IoT solutions. But uh, I think on the top, what we can do is we support uh, network service, and uh, uh, on because the uh, because the truck is uh, truck is a huge. It has a lot of uh, uh, how this is uh, actual rooms, and we can make the devices slightly bigger, and it can support the POW POS contents of mining as well. So interesting. Uh, yet another very interesting use case, actually. There's, uh, there's actually so many different ways that uh, this uh, you, your product can be used. So it's quite actually very interesting. Now, recently you've been at the Neo DevCon, and so 
can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, how'd that go? Did you meet any new potential partners? I know you can't say anything if you're like, well, we're going to partner with Microsoft tomorrow, you know, uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, have you, uh, how was it? Was it a fruitful time for you? Wow, Neo Def Con, I think is the best uh, in crypto events I have ever been. It was a, it was a very dynamic and uh, um, I think of different is uh, Neo Def Con actually has a lot of developers and you have a house of full of developers and the developer is a big asset that everybody hunting for. And uh, we, we met a lot of developers and we even met someone from Stanford in crypto lab. And um, well, we're experimenting some ideas right now and how to work together. And uh, because of the, for developing the Q-Link Q -Link chain, we do need a lot of people to join the team uh, to research uh, the both on blockchain and uh, well, we can cover the telecom direction, but we need to a lot of people who understand the blockchain and to, to design the system with us. So. Uh, Neo Defco uh, provides the provided this uh, platform for us, and um, I th on top of that, I think it's a very entertaining experience as well. And Neo uh, did a great job on the on the marketing, and he even have his own anthem. And um, there is a <laughs> there is after party we went, and on the menu, there is a full there was a full new cocktail. The name is uh, Neo. Yes. <laughs> and the dog home fair. The dog I can say I can say this picture of the drinks uh, of the home fair. It's actually pretty girly. I told the dog, I told the uncle dog himself and he, he loved. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah, that's very I mean you can see the creativity of this team and uh, um, not just on the on the technology level but how to implement technology to the to the life and that's essentially what we think is matter most, yeah. Very interesting. Now, what is Q-Link Labs? I saw this is another thing that's kind of under development. Can you tell us about that? Yes, Q-Link Lab is uh, our idea to support our ecosystem. So uh, for, for example, there is a lot of uh, new application comes up um, and they want to support, uh, for example, even the competitive competition for us. Wi-Fi sharing, they want to support uh, the data and the mobile distribution, mobile data and the content distribution. They want to support ads on the on the network. So essentially, there's a lot of new things that have come up. But what we think is, um, why don't we support you and uh, let's grow together? And you have this idea, and uh, I agree, and uh, we have these resources, and we have. Uh, we have a small amount of money we can invest into you. We have expertise who understand this, uh, this industry and we have, uh, we have experience, we have done this before. So why don't we support you and let's co-develop something together. Or even you can develop this on yourself and, uh, and uh, when we, our public chains that comes up. And can, can we try to support our public chain as well? So um, I think uh, for anyone who wants to, because the uh, telecom services or uh, network services is extremely diverse and uh, people in New Zealand may have different habits than people in China. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of depths uh, or just small tools can be developed uh, based on the smart contract and what kind of network services that you, you want. So for example, people in US use Yelp. But we people in China they use the uh, Dianping, and tr and uh, we we don't really use the uh, TripAdvisor. We use the uh, Ctrip. So there is a lot of uh, depth that could be just developed on your local levels. To I mean, but still uh, using the the Qlink uh, public chain to support mm -hmm. the the network service part, even just a part of the depth. We can we can support that. Um, so that is a uh, that is a. Uh, our attention of the of the lab essentially and uh, i think uh, we want to build an ecosystem for er who anyone for any developers are interested to have um, have a network adapt to be to joining the the, the queuing family so very cool very cool it's great mm -hmm. to have so you know 
I think it's so important to have, you know, this kind of lab or fund or place where you can kind of help those um, developers and people who want to get involved with, you know, building on top of your project there. So that's really yes. great. Yes. Now, I, I want to ask you, I guess, a, a kind of a, fu a, a fun personal question, like looking at the mm -hmm. other projects being developed on NEO, which is, mm -hmm. which is your favorite? Which project do you look at and go, ooh, I like that. I like what they're doing. That's really interesting. Um, Q-Link. <laughs> well, ex yeah. except for Q-Link, of course. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I think I think Neo has a lot of interesting projects. Um, I mean, the ones I'm impressed most, I think, uh, uh, because uh, I mean, I got into the the founder, or I know the founders through through the conferences, through the events. So mm -hmm. I think uh, Deep Brain is quite interesting. Offer Cats. Uh, what else? Uh, I, I just talked to I Musicify yesterday so they are the winner of the the dev competition mm. uh, i mean but surprisingly i think those are two founders are with a, with a lot of experience on the, how to commercially launch the products and how to uh how to technology develop the product oh peer atlas i think they are very good products as well um well, what else? I I'm sorry. I'm really there's a, no, there's a lot. I mean, that's, that's fine. I know, that's I know. Oh, oh, the effect, effect <laughs> I.O. Effect I.O. Effect oh, is Loop coming Ray. up as well. Loop yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I like the Loop Ray. Yeah. <laughs> this is the problem. There's so many to like. There's so many to like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Apex, I like Apex as well. So I think, uh, I mean, we'll stick together and try to um, try to make a boss for NEP5. I think there's a really a lot of great um, synergy happening between a lot of Neo-based projects as well. I don't feel like there's... A, I kind of get the feeling in general in the blockchain yeah. space, like there's not a lot yeah. of competition so much as trying to find, hey, how can we work together? How can I use your blockchain? How can you build on top of my uh, chain? And you know, all these different synergies come together, which is really exciting. Exactly. Now, I, I want you to tell me about the team. Now, currently the team's fairly small. Um, is it growing? Are you hiring? What are the the skills of the team that exist already? So uh, we have a decentralized team. <laughs> the team is really based on everywhere. Uh, development team is uh, uh, primarily in China right now. So we have a, a team of developers that we have been working together for over four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, they already developed a lot of uh, telecom-based uh, mobile product. Um, and uh, they're quite experienced. Um, so we are actually developing this product. We release the product once a week. So if you go to our KeyHop, uh, it's always uh, updated within seven days. So uh, this is the job. And my job is more about uh, the marketing, how to bring our image up, how to make the Keylink community bigger, how to, I mean, launch our product, and actually getting the product out. So, um, and we have a strategic team and investment team. Those are the headed by uh, our two other directors. Uh, one of them is Roger Lane. He's the founder of the Web Vision, which is the largest data center in Southeast Asia. And I personally have been an angel investor for the crypto. He has invested about 80 projects already. Um, and and uh, so recently, our, our newest team member, um, Mark, Mark joined our team. He's the former CTO of the Star Hub, the second largest uh, telecom operator in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So Mark was leading, leading on the uh, B2B solutions to enterprises. So we want to, there is a lot to disrupt into the current uh, telecom distribution system. So for example, prepaid card and the telecom operator has to actually manufacture the perfect card, get it shipped out to the mom and pop shops. There is a lot of cost for the prepaid card distribution. So if you think about the process, why don't you just adapt into the crypto and make, make just make sense easier. And a lot of countries, they don't have uh, Alipay or WeChat Pay. And I think they can take, take one leap ahead just mm -hmm. in crypto. And the, and the Mark has a Mark, Mark has very 
I mean, he has a really good reputation and influence in the regions. And we want to uh, we want to just work with uh, his partners on um, adopt Qlink into the traditional telecom industries, or maybe just uh, maybe just start with something small, and eventually we can provide the solutions. Uh, a blockchain solutions for like a bidding or operating system. Yeah. I think the blockchain offers so many great potential for countries that are a, a bit behind when it comes to exactly. technology and all these things. Exactly. We're actually seeing a lot of this happen in the developing world where they're simply skipping over steps that were taken, you know, in America, for example. They're just go, well, okay, we don't have banks, so let's just go straight to blockchain. Or we don't have this, let's exactly. just jump over to the new solution because it's easier and it's more adaptable for our situation every day exactly so how's the how's the situation in new zealand right now as far as um as far as um mm, you know in crypto community and uh, uh, like the developers. crypto community in, yep. yes as in general i mean yeah i mean the crypto community here in new zealand is it's pretty pretty vibrant. There's a lot of people here involved. There's a lot of people who are very excited about it. We've got a, only a couple projects that have developed here on Navcoin is the most famous uh, New Zealand project, I think, at the moment. But, you know, definitely there is a huge public interest here um, and I think a pretty vibrant blockchain community. There's regular meetups in most of our major cities all the time. So, yeah, we are we're looking forward to working with someone in New Zealand to launch our product. Yeah, absolutely. Come on down. Come to the blockchain meetings, and you know, I'm sure okay. there'll be a lot. Again, I'm sure there'll be a lot of interest in such solutions. So, okay. Thank now, I, I wanted to ask about your competition. So, mm -hmm. not necessarily blockchain space, even, but who do you see as your biggest competition? Are you in competition with the telecom companies, or are they potential allies for you? Well, um, to be honest, uh, because uh, we. We do provide end-to-end -end solutions uh, from the depths to the hardware. So I don't, I didn't see any exactly competitor of the Qlink. Mm -hmm. But I have to say this: uh, the time gap for us is very short. And uh, when we launched the Wi-Fi sharing, I think that was October last year. And then now you can see a lot of Wi-Fi, uh, the depths only based on the Wi-Fi sharing now. Um, and uh, but we still are the first one to launch the product. So I said, that's what I'm saying. The gap is very short, and probably just uh, one year, and you have the window to implement uh, all you have done. Um, but I haven't seen that. So the focus should be should focus for the uh, Qlink is more like building ecosystem rather than directly face to face uh, uh, competing with the same market as those uh, uh, other competitors or similar projects. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think the the reason the reason would be uh, because uh, we are. I mean, I, I have so much confidence in our public chain. I think uh, it will solve a lot of issues that the current public chain cannot solve on the telecom service. So, and uh, when you have this public chain, you will realize that is the cheapest way to support the network service. And if you, even though you use Ethereum or, or some something else, it's going to be very very expensive. Um, and uh, so we, I mean, the strategy is more like bringing community, bringing the ecosystem rather than directly competing. At the same time, really uh, full speeds on the product launch and uh, technology development. Mm -hmm. And what are the next steps on the roadmap for you? So next step, um, next step on the roadmap is uh, so for the Q1, we, oh, sorry, for the Q1 we will launch the VPN. Uh, and the Q2, and we're developing uh, SMS and the content uh, and the content and data bundle. And the Q and the after the, because we have the Chinese New Year coming, so after mm -hmm. the Chinese New Year's, and we're starting to uh, st starting to materialize all the ideas that we talk about the public chain and really put into the white paper and get people on board and uh, working on the public chain. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Now, if somebody wants to get involved in, in the Qlink community, how can they do that? What's the best place for them to get in contact with you? So, uh, I think the easy solution is just a Google search Qlink.mobi. Um, 
and you will link to the Qlink uh, website. Once you get a website, just get into our Telegram and uh, get in touch with any administer, uh, uh, yes, admin of our uh, Telegram. So they are very helpful. They, they can direct you to me. And mm -hmm. we have a very uh, vibrant um, the community, especially on the product feedback. So a lot of people have tried out and now it's actually on the Neon testnet right now. So we give people a, a Neon token on the Neon testnet. So they can feel like they're transferred, in, uh, they can transfer into the queuing and the transfer between the friends. Uh, they can feel like how small contracts work on the, um, on the, on the, um, I mean, on this utility app. So we're doing this right now. So, and uh, I just want to make a really quick advertisement. We're recruiting influencers globally. So wherever you, in New Zealand, uh, Russia, Japan, and uh, we are very happy to working with you, just build uh, Qlink local communities, and then the product will launch through the community first. Very cool. It's important to, you know, let people know that they can get involved, let people know that, you know, you're looking for people to get involved. So that's, I think that's really important. Now, we were talking a little bit before uh, we started the uh, the interview here about the uh, the app itself. Now, uh, you're going to send me a video afterwards. And so anyone who's listening, we're going to do, um, so stay tuned after we say our goodbyes and we're going to do a demonstration of the app for you. So stick around for that, but that'll be coming up pretty soon. Anyway, yeah. Susan, I wanted to thank you so, so much for, for taking the time to sit down with us today. This has been a really interesting chat. I think it's a very oh, interesting it's project. Yeah, you ask excellent questions. I mean, it's very logic, and you research our project already, already which means uh, thank you very much for your time and looking mm -hmm. to our project as well. Thank you.